In this video, I'd like to discuss carbohydrate molecules in detail by first mentioning that carbohydrates vary in length as some are larger than others. And these very large carbohydrates are called polysaccharides because they contain many monosaccharides or sugar monomers joined by O-glycosidic linkages. And these sugars are called carbohydrates because if we were to look at the empirical formula for a carbohydrate, you get this. You have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and this N basically represents an integer greater than 1. And this H2O is a water molecule, essentially. And another name for a water molecule is hydrate. So we basically have carbohydrate, and that's how we get the name. And although this is the em empirical formula, um, the simplest monosaccharide consists of um, three carbon, six hydrogen, and three oxygen. So we basically switch out the N for three. And generally speaking, we have two types of sugars. We have aldoses and we have ketoses. And aldoses are sugars with aldehyde groups, which are functional groups with a carbonyl group, hydrogen attached to the central carbon atom, and a varial group represented by R. And ketoses consist of ketones, which is another functional group that consists of a carbonyl group and instead of a hydrogen like we do in aldoses we have another variable group actually we have two variable groups attached to the central carbon atom now an example of a ketose would be dihydroxyacetone so di dihydroxyacetone which is a three carbon ketone sugar, which looks something like this. And we can see that it's a ketose because there's this carbonyl group right here. This carbonyl group. And then we also have the variable groups, which is right here. Okay. And we can also draw this dihydroxyacetone molecule to look something like this, which is a little bit more simpler in my opinion. Oops. Okay, that's basically the same thing. Carbonyl group and two variable groups. And this is a trio sugar. It's called a trio sugar for tri, meaning three, because we have three carbons and this os, this os at the end basically signifies that it's going to be a sugar. And we can also draw a aldehyde version of this trio sugar. Um, which is called glyceraldehyde. Glycer. Which would be an aldose because it contains an aldehyde group. However, there are two different kinds of glyceraldehydes. We have the D isomer, the D. and the L isomer. And so the D will look something like this.
and the L will look something like this. Okay. And these D and L isomers, they are basically mirror images of each other because if you were to take if you were to put it in front of a mirror, pretend that this is a mirror, they would be mirror images of each other. And glyceraldehyde is a three carbon aldose sugar that is non superimposable, meaning that we're gonna have two different kinds of this molecule. And non superimposable basically means that no matter how many ways or however we orient the molecules, like rotating them, they will never look the same. So an example would be our hands. No matter how we rotate our hands, we'll never get them to look the same on both sides. So yeah, that's that. Now, in the dihydroxyacetone, that sugar, we don't have a mirror image because if I draw this again, right? We don't have a mirror image because there's no stereogenic carbon and a stereogenic carbon is basically a carbon that's chiral, meaning that there's four different groups attached to this one carbon. However, this isn't the case. We technically have two different groups because this group and this group are the same. And then we have the oxygen. So that's why we don't have um, isomers of this dihydroxyacetone. However, in the, in the case of the glyceraldehyde, there's four different groups. We have okay. In respect to this carbon, there would be four different groups. You would have. Um, one group right here another group right here third group right here which is a hydroxide and then a hydrogen which is the fourth group and this means that there will be an enantiomer so enantiomer is basically a mirror image so there will be a mirror image of this molecule with respect to this central carbon atom so this carbon right right there this one and remember the D and the L um, glyceraldehyde that basically identify the different types of sugars we're talking about because glyceraldehyde has the same formula so it's gonna look the same so we have to label them with D or L and an example, we can use another example if we look at um, erythrose, which is another, say, four carbon sugar. So, D erythrose and L erythrose. So this is what the D looks like. We have four carbons. Four carbons. And then the L erythros would look something like this. It's the same thing, basically. Okay. But you'll see that there's a difference based on where these hydroxides are located. 
So in the D erythros, they're facing to the right, whereas in the L erythros, they're facing to the left. And that's basically what the D and the L represent. So D, the hydroxides in respect to the central carbon will be facing to the right, and then L to the left. And we can also see that the sugars are aldehydes because, or aldoses because they have an aldehyde group. The um, carbonyl group with the hydrogen attached to the carbon, and then the R variable group, which is this, in, this entire thing right here. And same thing goes for right here. And so if we wanted to name sugars, we would basically have to look at whether it's an aldose or ketose as well as the number of carbons it has okay so like trios hexose pentose so if we have a six carbon sugar with an aldehyde group How would you name that? Well, because it gives us that it has an aldehyde group, we know it's an aldose. And because it has six carbons, it's a hexose. Basically, we're going to combine these and get an aldohexose sugar. Okay. Now, if they give you the structure, so let's say we have. Stew for the sake of example. We'll do this. How would you name this sugar? Well, first, you can see that it's going to be a trios, right? So it's a trios because there's three carbons. We have the first carbon, second carbon, and the third carbon. Okay, and how do we determine if it's an aldose or a ketose? Remember that an aldehyde group looks like this, and a ketose looks like this. And now because we have this double bonded oxygen to the carbon with the hydrogen, we're going to have an aldose because this is an aldehyde group. So it's going to be an aldo trios. Okay, so that's basically how you name sugars.